Welcome to episode 96 in this series where I am programming an NES game uh, from scratch. Um, let's get into it. I, I don't even know where to start. So, last week I had developed this new uh, sort of enemy interaction where the uh, player ship is flying and... Um, these enemies fire off like a little what's supposed to be a um, projectile that would start maybe on the ground and then ascend up and so the animation would be that you would see the projectile getting bigger and then they fire from below um, and you have to avoid them I don't know that there's really any shooting them given that the speed uh, at which they appear and traverse the screen and um, <clears throat> one thing I noticed when messing around with this is that um, the delay in how quickly they appear after the little uh, piece there um, flies off the bottom of the screen is maybe too long. Um, it's, oh, right, that's a collidable wall. Um, it seemed like... It was okay last week, but kind of settling on this uh, or sitting on this a little bit um, over the past week, it just seems like it's maybe too long. So we'll shorten that uh, delay a little bit. So let's see. I think that's the medium, right? The medium is counting up. Uh, enemy is out for the first time. Set up the Y position at Bob screen. Uh, already initialized. Enemy not complete. Skip time delay. Branch not equal. Right, so let's reduce this. Let's make it a shorter count. Um, one of the things that is... Um, Part about this is um, coming into this. I thought I had a um, an idea of what I wanted to do with the way I wanted to design this, and um, yeah, that's not true, I guess. Or I'm just I was not. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little bit um, too critical of my approach to this, but. Uh, it's one of those things where, because I'm doing this all from uh, the beginning, I um, I was hoping that my original idea worked, but as is uh, a lot of times the case with game design, or at least from things that I've read about game design, it's one of those things where you um, typically... You have an idea, you test it, it either doesn't work or doesn't work the way that you expect it to, and so you spend a lot of time sort of tweaking um, that idea. Oh, I, I still feel like maybe that's a little bit too long, although that's definitely going to be too short. But let's let's see. Maybe I'm not even adjusting it because I'm talking. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I do want that to be a relatively fast transition. I, I wanted there to be some delay, but it shouldn't be um, it shouldn't be quite so long as it was. And um, obviously the, the gap in the number of enemies here is is intentional because we're testing out this interaction. The actual level would involve more. I guess the trouble I'm having with this whole idea of wanting it to be feeling somewhat more more on the realistic side in terms of you know how a ship might interact um, with other flying things um, I'm actually thinking that because the delay is so short oh, never mind I was gonna say I was thinking because maybe the because I thought maybe the delay was so short it was um, not uh, interacting the way that I wanted to, but it's one of those things where 
you know, once you start getting distracted by multiple things happening on the screen, um, then the, uh, the timing is going to be a little bit more dependent on your reflexes than, than, um, than the individual. Well, I don't even know what I'm trying to explain here. Like, um, it's one thing to have one set of interactions happening at a time. So you have the one enemy firing off those little, uh, projectiles, but, um, it's another, if you're then also concerned about the next enemy coming up and the, and the barrier walls and stuff like that. So anyway, um, uh, that's, that's working more or less as I wanted it to. Um, so really, um, and I had delayed recording yesterday because I was thinking about how I want this to work a little bit more clearly, um, or, or uh, deeply, I was thinking a little more deeply about this and um, having a hard time thinking about shooter mechanics, uh, you know, shoot em up mechanics that are not sort of counterintuitive to the idea of what I was trying to do. I mean, if you've ever played Ikaruga, uh, which is a really tough game, but a really cool game with a really interesting mechanic, um, you know, you, you see the enemies in the background in a lot of areas and then they come up to the foreground and you you know you're attacked when when that happens and we, we can't really do the same thing we could probably do a little bit of that which would be interesting but you know the real challenge is then it doesn't become so much about shooting things it becomes more about dodging things which maybe that's okay maybe that's the core mechanic of what we're trying to do like you're being attacked by a series of, uh, of of ships that are, you know, um, trying to um, stop you from reaching your goal, right? And so they're going to be coming at you at full speed, and you need to avoid them rather than um, trying to shoot them down necessarily. Like we'll have parts where you'll you'll shoot enemies down and certainly the, there will be ways where you know we'll have the ability to um, sort of counteract some of those ground level um, items like this you know ground level enemies like this where it's supposed to be a ground based enemy that's firing off these projectiles that will reach you reach you at high altitude but um, That'll be most likely some sort of special weapon. Um, and, um, oh, this is going to get tricky. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if I can actually make it through that without getting destroyed first, first attempt here through. Oh, now I hit the barrier. So. Oh. That was dumb. I shouldn't have tried to do that. Um, so maybe let's explore that. Let's explore the idea of this being more a game of, or not more of, but let's explore the idea of the game being uh, focused on um, a co an element of avoidance rather than destruction at the high altitude level and then maybe at the low altitude level it becomes more of um you're attacking you're attacking things that are um coming in like you know um drone ships that are able to hover and and uh and uh come in from the top because i i again i you know i'm kind of hung up on and maybe maybe eventually i'll abandon this but i'm i'm hung up on this idea of you know, conveying speed and having these elements of you having to, um, you having to do things like dodge and, um, and, uh, deal with enemies coming in at high speed, um, as it would in a real sort of scenario of flying a ship in an enemy situation, right? Um, it's just kind of hard to convey that in 2D, um, and give the player enough room to, um, 
to, to maneuver um, and enough time to maneuver without it requiring rote memorization. Like, so for, you know, a game like Ikaruga, you get really good not only but because you're um, skilled at playing, but also you begin to memorize, you know, for the first level you get, um, you know, um, So for those of you who've never played, you should go play it. But um, and they have it on Steam if you don't have it, like for GameCube or something. But um, so Ikaruga, the the main mechanic is that you have your screen and it, and it is tall like this. Um, actually, it's on Switch too. If you get it on Switch, what's cool is you can uh, rotate the Switch screen and play it in this uh, 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 portrait mode instead of the landscape mode. So the 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 core mechanic is that you have two. Um, you have two modes, right? The ship can be either in a white mode or a black mode. And then the enemies come in and they're either um, white enemies or black enemies. And so um, in the beginning of the first level, which I was just playing to kind of think about shoot 'em ups and the, the core ideas behind them, you know, you get a, you get a, a set of first, uh, the white enemies coming in this way, right? And then uh, in the next, part of the screen you get the black enemies coming in this way and then so on and so forth and there's a repeated pattern of the enemies and part of playing the level well is knowing when to switch between the ship being white and black for the en energy absorption um, so that you can build up your special attacks and also not get destroyed um, and it progress progresses and there are different uh, parts of the game um, and, uh, it, you know, it, it, it does definitely rely a fair bit on memorization to get to, um, you know, what I would con consider like exceptional play, which I'm not. Um, but that said, um, I feel like I don't like when... And maybe this is just beginner's bias or something. I, I don't, I don't like that there are shooters um, or shoot 'em ups that, um, if you don't have the level memorized, it's it's almost impossible to complete. Um, I think that there should be some sort of there should be some sort of trade off of you know your performance versus completing the level or um, there should be a trade-off of like you know what sort of maybe bonuses or points you get versus um, just how or wh whether or not you can actually complete the the level right so it should be possible even um, someone who's never played the level if they're reasonably good at shooters to complete the level uh, maybe it won't be a perfect playthrough maybe they'll miss things maybe they won't get a high score if we're going to do score whatever the case may be um, it's going to be they're going to be able to complete it if they have a certain amount of skill um, and then you know they can go back and play through and get better and actually you know uh, have perfect runs through it um, versus most shooters where, you know, I find that even if you're reasonably good or, you know, I feel like I'm okay, um, it's, you know, almost impossible um, until you've played through a level a bunch of times to um, get through them because they're just so um, um, jam-packed. And I, I mean, part of that is they're catering to a very specific audience of people who are looking, you know, who have played a bunch of shooters and um, and now they're just looking for the next the next one to play um, and so their skill level is exceedingly high compared to average players and um, and so these games are sort of tend to be biased towards them um, and certainly I want people who are fans of shmups to play the game um, but I am concerned that if it, if the game is too hard, at least in the initial levels, um, that it's not going to be something that people who aren't huge shmup 
fans or players will want to um, continue with playing, right? Like we, I want them to make it through the the first levels and actually um, feel reasonably confident, even if after the first level or the second level they you know start dying immediately and and have to start over or or you know or or just repeating levels over and over again. Which that that part's okay. I don't want it to be too easy because then nobody's served, right? The sort of um, veteran players are like, this game is crap, it's too easy. And then the um, uh, the people who who don't play shmups, they, they'll say, well, this game was easy and I beat it and, you know, won't really feel accomplished, especially if then they go play another shmup and, <laughs> and then they, they find out that this game was really super easy and they they you know didn't prepare them for other games of the genre so there's got to be a fine balance there um and like i said part of part of that balance is also related to my core idea of of it the game from a i guess a visual aspect or a, a, a certain feel of how the game should play um So let's try and add something else to the design here. I'm thinking I want to do one of the things that seemed like it would be cool to do is sort of a cascading enemy, um, which is you know pretty common for um, a shmup. But what I what I'd like to do is do it in a way that's a little bit not. It's not going to be that different, but it, it's going to be different in the way I think that it appears on screen. Um, you know, typically you, you get, you, you know, these, uh, these streams of enemies that come in and swoop in, in a particular direction. And I was thinking it'd be cool to do something where we have, you know, two streams of enemies that kind of corner you in, uh, or not corner you in, but corral you into almost like a channel. Um, and, uh, and they continue on and then they will, they'll narrow in and also shift their position. If you've ever played, if you've ever played, there was a game for the TI-82, um, uh, yeah, there was a game for the TI-82 called Race, um, and I don't know if that was a ripoff of some other game or not, but um, the way that that worked, it actually scrolled downwards, and what it was is you had barriers that were on the screen like this kind of <clears throat> right and then your little character was in the center and as the game progressed you were going down and this these barriers would shift so you'd have to move your character on this track and as you progress the track would go you know winding in a particular direction, and it would also get more and more narrow. Um, and the idea is that you know it would become harder and harder to react because you were going so fast um, with the with the shape narrowing in and and um, shifting sort of sinuously back and forth. Eventually, you'd hit a wall and crash, and then your score was based on how far you you got. So, what I was thinking would be really neat is to have sort of a similar idea of you know these ships that are <clears throat> kind of flying down um, in, a, in a stream of, of um, or maybe it's not even ships, maybe it's even, um, I don't know, they're something, uh, whether it's ammunition fire or, um, you know, missiles or energy weapon or whatever it is, where you get a stream of them and then, you know, same thing, you get sort of this pattern that evolves um, where it it um, it uh, you know sort of corrals you into this channel that you have to follow and either you're on the left side of it you may be you know on you know I think ideally you would want to be in the middle here um, and not on this side or that side um, but who knows I mean we can 
play around with that and use that to see if that makes a difference in terms of <clears throat> makes a difference in terms of like um, can we make it that it's really hard to be on the side so you know yes it's po possible to um, successfully navigate that but you're better off being in the middle so subsequent playthroughs you'll you'll remember to be in the middle even though it was challenging um, to be on the sides I don't know Let, let's let's do that tonight um, and I am um, after that we'll, we'll call it an evening but um, I, I still have um, some serious work to do in terms of design um, it's like I, I've said a few times now. It's like this is this is the hard part. I you know I can code all day long if I know what the design is, um, and I have um, every confidence in myself to um, to actually um, make make these things happen in the in the game, um, but. You know, without the design, it's like I'm just basically building a tech demo. Um, all right, so what I want to do is I want to remove sprite from here because we're going to put it into the the bullet sprite in here from here because I want to put it into the map as a sprite that we can spawn. Um, well, actually, you know what? I take that back. Um, let's we have enemy bullet. Let's add. Let's add it as a new type of tile set. Um, uh, let's call it enemy stream. That's eight by eight, isn't it? And I haven't forgotten about the zero page series. I, I just, there's just too much going on, um, too many things that require my attention, and so I have not had a chance to put that together even though that one is going to be a um, you know different and hopefully easier um, um, episode uh, to put together because it's going to be more like this style of um, episode it's just you know one more one more thing that has to be done and um, I am I, I've been just fairly busy with um, everything uh, what happened here enemy stream so that's embedded but that's probably not what I wanted to do is it okay we can look into that so all of that is contained but for now um, I don't want to invent new ways to destroy our productivity by um, by investigating a new feature in Tile and how that's going to get exported, so let's um, let's just stick with this for now since we know this works. So export as all right, so. Let's get rid of some of these for now because we don't need to be bombarded with that. I'm also going to get rid of the um, I'm going to get rid of the um, the barriers because as fun as they are to dodge right now, the main thing I want to test is this new enemy type. So what I'm thinking we want to do <clears throat> what 
what I'm thinking I want to do is something like we, we're going to just start the, we're going to place it in a way where we want it to start, right? So we were to say, you know, maybe have it like kind of narrow over here. Um, and it's just going to be the one, even though it's going to actually start a couple uh, streams of uh, these bullets. Um, because I don't want to have to deal with like figuring out how to pair these in the level. I think, I think that'll be sufficient. Maybe we can figure out a way to do that later. Um, but that's not important right now. All right, so we've got that, and now we've got to create the enemy stream sprite file, which is really just the bullet. Um, let's go into the assets, into PNG, and then copy bullet.png to enemy stream.png, and then NES asset tool PNG to Sprite enemy stream dot png and then let's take a look at what that looks like enemy stream dot sprite go away windows popped up a message that i i'm not interested in right now um, all right, so that's the background color, save the sprite. Um, and then I guess we should just be able to export it now. NES asset tool, export. matter A file exists full path um, what's the problem that's there we'll add a Good error message for that one. Let's take a look at what's going on that's causing this. <sighs> do, 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 do. Come on. And then once we have this working, it'll be just like we did with the, um, just like we did with the other, um, the, the low altitude projectile and you know how we spawn the different entity types as we as we um, as we um, progressed um, as time elapsed in the game so what's the problem uh, retry to debug so what's the problem here shooter assets tile sets enemy stream did I not save that? I thought I did. Um, I guess I didn't, but it's weird because I would have thought for sure uh, that I that I would have. Uh, full path uh, dot ex so if uh, if not this then return uh, well no what do I have the go to error I think because there's some cleanup that needs to get done let's um, let's take a look I can't remember what I did here go to exit with error Print of the uh, meta tile file specified could not be found. Specified in the map. Could 
not be found. New line. If not system hooks, oh, not system dot hooks, system hooks. So we should get an actual error here now. Metatile file specified in the map could not be found. Enemy stream.json. I, I guess I just didn't export. I thought I did though. Tile sets. Enemy stream.json. Stream oh, I didn't put it in the right folder and it's still got the double period. I hate when that does that. Okay. Now it's in here. Now that should export. There we go. Okay, so we added some additional error checking, or an actual error message for the error checking, because it was checking that already. Um, oh, you know what we need to do, though? I uh, forgot. So, NES asset tool. Um, sprite to JSON uh, met, uh, enemy stream dot sprite I just want to um, I want to make this use the um, bullet palette Just use enemy zero, I guess. Okay. Um, so now that we have that, we can rebuild. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's not right. What was the... So we'll just make it reuse that. get this right eventually, I promise. Um, okay. Okay. Um, just want to switch that and save. And good. And um, now we can export. So let's take the exported content and just make sure that nothing broke as a result of doing that. actual game those will not be attackable by uh, their standard weapons fire because they're going to be you know on the ground and not not reachable with that um, so 
Let's see. Where did I put that? I put it pretty far up because I didn't need to do that. So nothing broke, which is good. So let's start by adding this in here. So let's take a look at some of this code that got generated and modified and whatnot. So this is all good. Um, that's fine, that's fine. Draw entity, entities, entities ink, enemy bullet, medium scout, so we don't. Hmm. So it didn't actually, why is that? Export as. Let's take a look at the, uh, maybe I just didn't export it in the um, map file, right? Okay, so enemy stream is there. The GID is five, it's there. Uh, why are there two? Position X6, that's weird that there are two at the, with the same. Okay, I only need one, but thanks. Export as, yes. Okay, so now we've got just the one there. Let's export the, uh, the project again. Of is that it's prob it may be that it is looking at the PNG and thinks that it is the same. I mean, it is the same PNG, uh, but this is going to be a problem for something like when we want to for something when we want it to reuse the same content but not be considered the same thing. Again, not something we necessarily need to fix today. Let's um, just make this work for now. So assets, uh, tile sets, enemy stream .tsx. Let's change that to um, let's Reopen the map. Export all, export as map.json, replace it. <coughs> export. See if now it shows up. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I know what the problem is. It's actually silly. Um, it's the, uh, we t exported the tile sets to JSON, right? But the enemy stream one 
isn't uh, wasn't updated because it didn't re-export that, so it's using the PNG there. So when we re-export that, that should I think be fixed now. this reconciling down map1.json is using enemy stream.tsx and for my tile sets I have these two files enemy stream.png there and enemy stream.png there Reopen this. I mean that that all looks good. That looks correct. So export as. Replace this. Is it not recognizing? Why is it not splitting, including that in the map? So the fact that it, well, I mean, it was looking at it here, right? And the the JSON file clearly references GID five and pulls in the tile set file here. Um, hmm. Do I have something different that I'm missing? This is referencing enemy stream.png. It's called enemy stream. That's fine. This is our generated one, which is good. That's the sprite. That's the PNG. What is that? Where is that coming from? Assets tile set. Why? Well, okay, but that's referencing the right. That's referencing the right file. So. Weird. Do I need to just fully re-export everything from tiled? I don't know why it would care. Okay, so I'm gonna export. Shooter, and we replace some stuff, and we go back to our code. So now it has bullet referenced twice. Is that because I created the sprite originally with the bullet? I guess that's well, but the that shouldn't matter for. Hmm. What happens when I try to shortcut things? That's okay. Like that isn't referencing the old file. Let's um, enemy stream dot 
sprite, and then let's create it again. NES asset tool, enemy stream dot png sprite to png. I mean png to sprite. This isn't going to work because we can't reference bullet in here twice. So why is the asset tool still referencing this as bullet? Something is out of date. this JSON why that's weird how did that get rip that's really strange because I oh hmm is it export as and we stream replace yes Okay, that has the right reference in it. And then this still says bullet in, hmm. There's like a, is it a weird bug in the export process? Like it remembers the old Oh, it does, even though in the XML, it no longer references that. No, it's just some sort of stubborn thing where it's not, it's not changing it in the, t there we go. Okay, so it wasn't saving it in the tile set that way causing, I guess, that sort of weird mismatch. All right, so that was strange, but okay. Now what? Enemy stream.json, enemy stream.tsx. Uh, what's going on? What's wrong now? <clears throat> um, let's take a look at this. Read is failing. Load palette. Palette file. What palette file is it trying to open? Bullet zero dot pal. Is that not correct? I thought that was... Let's, um, let's see what... So let's see what palette is actually using. Bullet dot... Bullet dot JSON. It's just using bullet zero dot pal. Um, okay, so enemy stream is it being key sensitive.
see if that behaves a little bit better now. Oh, in the um, shoot. Visual Studio had it open. <clears throat> We may want to re-export just in case there was all that stuff that was open. Let's, uh, why, why are you doing this to me? Do that. Why on earth do you not like Can't just change that and expect it to do something to the sprite file. That doesn't work. Okay. Sorry about that. That was a little silly. But I'm sure you've come to expect no less from how this series goes. Alright, so that compiles. Um, We've got an enemy stream entity type here, so now it should show up when we go back into the game. I don't even care that the player died there. I just want to see that that thing shows up as we get there. Yep, it's at the top. You can't really see it real well, but it's there. It's right at the top there. It's just that the entity was added and then we have no logic to handle it. So let's, uh, let's fix that. <clears throat> um, let's pause that. All right. So we can get rid of this. Get rid of this, get rid of that, and that, and okay, the draw is fine, so um, do is we are going to <clears throat> um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it process uh, an enemy bullet just to start with and um, and then we'll see how we're going to handle this going forward all right so if we look at how we do that here, we have this add map object um, with uh, T1, T2, and T3. So um, load a um, uh, entities right. type stored into T1, that's our first parameter, um, load um, for the X position, I don't know, it doesn't really even matter right now, let's just make it say 16, um, stored into T2, load A, um, F0, Sort to T3, that's our Y position, and then jump to subroutine add map object. I think that's what it's called, right? 
Yep, and then uh, jump to um, clear entity. And that's it. That's all. That's all she wrote um, for that. Obviously, that only just creates an enemy bullet and then clears that entity. Um, but that's all I wanted to do for now. So let's uh, let's uh, see where that takes us. Ah, <laughs> that's a little more challenging to uh, deal with. Now that there's less delay, you really have to kind of be on top of not um, not being in the way of the ship when it flies up. Or you could be, you know, at the top here, but that gives you some some uh, delay there, some additional time to maneuver out of the way. But I assume that uh, we'll have other provisions for that where, you know, other enemies or something or this uh, enemy stream thing will you know, uh, kind of counterbalance that a little bit so you can't just be, you know, tied up with the, um, tied up at, to the top of the screen and let that uh, kind of shield you from the enemies. Um, let's take a look at what's going on with enemy bullet here. Um, no, that's not what I want. Uh, where are you? So, oh, okay, because it doesn't know, it doesn't know what kind of enemy bullet it is, so... Uh, after we do this, we need to um, load A with T1 and transfer A to X. I guess we... Hmm. First we want to do transfer... we got to preserve X. We're going to need it. So transfer X to A and then transfer A to Y and then load A transfer A to X, and then store A, entities plus entity data X, um, well, load A with one, so straight bullet, and then transfer Y to A, stop it, transfer A to uh, X, and then we're back to the way it's supposed to be, all right. I'm slowing it down instead of speeding it up. I did try this on real hardware uh, recently. Everything seems to be operating as expected, so that's good. I always like to um, verify that. All right, we're going to move this down. Um, so that it is not quite so far up the map, so I don't have to wait for it. Uh, we'll put it right over here. How about... I don't know why I always put it so far up the map. For testing purposes, it really just should be... Should just right, be right there, right? Just double check. I, I think that's what I did, but... I'm tired and that's when I make ac make accidents, make mistakes. That's when accidents happen. <laughs> Can't even speak. Um, all right. Stop. My make. My make. It's like my man from, uh, if you saw that terrible, uh, what movie was that? Justice League and Aquaman. He was he was an entertaining part of that movie, but it was not not a good film. All right, um, 
I assume that I'm just breaking something here. So it creates the bullet. Uh, transfer X to A. Transfer A to Y. Load A with T1. Right? T1 has the index. Uh, and map jump clear entity. Load A, data X, clear C. Store A, T1. Put T1 index of object just added. Yeah, so enemy bullet X, enemy bullet is checking what F7. Oh, okay. So the problem is this. This should be zero. It's not even getting onto the screen basically because it is spawning too far off screen. Okay, there it is, cool. So, it showed up over there. Um, so now what we wanna do, let's make two of these appear. This one is going to be, um, what's the screen width? It's 256, right? So we'll do, I don't know, EF. We're just experimenting here, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I thought there was the possibility of that because I didn't really think about it too carefully what I was doing. So, um, okay, so uh, this actually doesn't need to be done. Oh yeah, I guess it does. Um, yeah, I shouldn't just do what I did. I knew better than that. the bullets there appearing so now what we have to do is we need a we need a we need to use the counter because we want to space them out a little bit um, Say we'll end it with three and <clears throat> branch if not equal to skip add stream object and skip add stream object is this uh, jump to entity complete I think that's the So that's that, and then we're going to 
stop doing this. So we're going to get an endless stream of bullets now. This should be interesting. We're probably going to end up running out of entity slots. Yep. So we got to do some spacing to make that a little bit more reasonable. Let's try seven. So that gap has to be a little bit, it has to be somewhat narrow, right? Like, cause we don't want it to be too, um, let me think about this before I do anything. Uh, 15, yeah. Um, we want it to be pretty narrow between the bullets because we don't want to um, make it too easy to maneuver in between. But we also don't want it to be uh, too tight because then we're going to run out of entity spaces. Okay, so that's that's reasonably okay. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to make it so that the the data variable determines the width of this instead of it being hard coded. So. Let's say we know it should be zero when we get initialized. So what we'll do is every time we add a bullet, let's we'll increment that and then what we'll do is we will load a with 0f no sorry 20 and then um oh that doesn't work uh zero df and then set the carry and nope and then subtract entities plus entity data x so it'll just keep increasingly subtracting a larger amount um, and then basically well let's just see what happens let's make sure that I got that part of it right and then we can um, Is it getting narrower? Well, two things. It's not okay. Um, your carry, add carry. That doesn't make sense. That does. Um, yes. Yeah, so it didn't actually assemble my code because I had a mistake. So now it should start getting more and more narrow. So even if I avoid. No. Oh, it is. It's getting narrower. Um, but not nearly <laughs> at the speed that I wanted it to. Um, Let's, let's make it a little bit more dramatic here. Cool, so that's having the uh, desired effect. Now, obviously we can't have it cross like that. Um, and we also wanna do something where it shifts Let's let's um, let's do a couple some some other things here before we do that. So we're obviously running out of entities. Um, 
we should be able to add more because you know, we have 18. Let's let's see if we can do 32 because we're not using the zero page for that. <clears throat> Huh, 646. Total entities, huh? What is that compared to total entities? Size of max. a problem compare oh because that's no good okay uh, we can't have quite that many because the byte isn't big enough to hold that many entities we'll we'll uh, scale it down we can always fix that later but um, right now we're just going to kind of dumbly brute force this down to the minimal the maximum we can where it assembles um, let's see if that um, yeah so we're not getting the same problem as before where they are okay that was cool so we're not getting the same problem as before where we um, are running out of <laughs> That's kind of neat. Um, the entities quite so quickly. Um, we'll have to do some additional work to make that actually happen at a um, with with a or uh, support having more. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay. <laughs> Um, that's that's more than I wanted. So let's um, we'll we'll kind of uh, even that out a little bit. So the reason I was doing this was because I was using the and to make it roll back around with like a modulo. But let's say compare it to ten um, and branch if not equal to there. Otherwise, load a zero and store it into that. <coughs> So let's see what that looks like. It might be a little bit more evenly spaced, and again, not quite, not running out of the entities quite so quickly. No, still. Also, because they're smaller, well, that's not a bad, that's not bad spacing. Um, because they're smaller, the spacing has to be tighter, right? Um, so we, we could, in this instance, benefit from actually having a real a real asset there that is um, a larger size um, because then we have to have fewer entities there to um, make up for it um, but that's okay so and then can we do the same thing with the X position so like if I well that is the X position so um, um, it, it also, an, an additional, just a pure offset. Like if we say, okay, we're going to add it twice because once it's the clear carry, we're going to add that as the offset. Well, that does that does nothing in this case. That's dumb. Um, How would we do this? Potentially some other sort of
it's usually some sort of other offset variable. But um, what we can do though is if uh, we'll we'll stop doing this if uh, data is. Um, I don't know, greater than some value. Uh, compare, well, we'll store it. Uh, compare to, let's just say, if we are, Let's say 16. So if it's 16, then let's see. So if the value of data is greater than 16, the carry will be um, set. So branch carry clear to here. Otherwise, jump to clear entity. So that will despawn the enemy stream. Let's see how quickly that happens. So that was like way too quick, right? Same. That wasn't terrible, but still too quick, I think. And this is all just, you know, experimenting, playing around with this, these ideas. Um, what we'll do in a moment here, or, well, it's already late. Um, what we'll do in the next stream is I will, I will implement the code that makes it actually shift back and forth. Um, as it narrows and then um, and then we can we can see how that how that goes if that is a if that works as a um, a viable as a, if that works as a viable mechanic uh, should they be uh, something that can be destroyed by the player probably I feel like that wouldn't hurt things um, but at the same point, I don't know. Um, and I have to think about other sort of, uh, other sort of um, game ideas for how, um, what's gonna attack the player while we're traversing the level. And think a little bit more deeply about the design of the game, which is, as I said, for me, the more difficult part of all of this. Um, what's cool is that, you know, these elements are, are coming together in the sense that we're getting something. Oh, that was. Uh, how close was I to that? I guess I was pretty close. If it. Yeah, so. Um, it'd actually be kind of cool if. I wonder if we could do that. It'd be cool if um, enemy bullets if they collide with explosions also then explode and we could get like a chain reaction of explosions. <laughs> um, obviously not, uh, not super critical, but it would be kind of cool to just see that happen. Uh, check player collision. is going to work because it's for the player but we'll just give it a give it a try does it just explode let's just explode just because it might be fun to see what that looks like where you get these cascading explosions nope um Here. 
an any type of explode. Branch of not equal. Compare. Oh. Uh, anyway, that's not important. The, the reason it didn't work was because it was doing a branch of not equal in both cases. If it, it, it that was a that was like an and comparison. It basically uh, no, it wasn't. It was uh, it was an or comparison that was skipping this part um, rather than um, rather than allowing it to go um, if either of those were true. Like it should just be that there's this jump, and then if this is true, it skips over the jump, and if it, anyway, um, not super important for, uh, for tonight, it was just a thought, um, but anyway, uh, thank you as always for watching, if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at Clairvis, I uh, also will post this to YouTube, uh, which you know, because you were watching it on YouTube, I'm sorry, that was force of habit, um, and uh, I'm on Nintendo Age as Zelius, and uh, if you feel free to email me or comment on this video, and I will catch you on Thursday on the live stream. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you then. Bye.